just small comment. Uh, even though my name is Rukni, uh, it is a variation of Rukni Deen. But very rarely people call me Rukni Deen. And uh, even in my official document, I'm Rukni. So you call me Rukni only. Uh, the, uh, there are many things we can discuss and many things we can talk about, but practicality doesn't permit. So we settled on one topic because, uh, you know, uh, it goes on and on and then understanding will be lost. Hmm? So we settled on one topic. Uh, you asked me why uh, I suggested this topic. I suggested three things and uh, then this was selected from it. Uh, reason is because this is a very central topic in the Christian faith. And there is a very serious difference between the uh, Muslims and the Christians um, in this point. So as uh, Mr. Naik has, Dr. Naik has suggested, we're going to very frankly, but in a spirit of friendship and understanding. So here is just we are uh, presenting our views from our side and left for you to uh, choose what you like and uh, reject what you like. We respect each other's views and even when you say no to my views, I respect your feelings and I totally honor your saying no. So I'm just presenting the point. Now, uh, a few things I'll be picking up from the Bible, but if I go on picking from the Bible, then there's no end to it because there are maybe hundreds of verses related to the cross. Uh, so some things I will just say it's from the Bible but without really telling you where is it. Maybe a few things I will read from the Bible. Uh, because my purpose is here not that you re memorize which part and all that. Just my purpose is that you understand the message behind it. The spirit behind the uh, message of the cross. Uh, why is the cross central in the Christian faith? What is the reason the cross is so important? First of all, let me comment on the cross itself, physically the cross. Uh, what you understand, many people understand, I'm not saying all, many people understand, the cross is the following. I go to Zaveri Bazaar, search for a not very expensive jeweler, and have a nice shining little bit gold cross and hang it around my neck. And that is very suitable to fashion. Uh, some will buy a gold 17, some 18, some gold uh, 21. Good, nice, attractive looking cross. Going with fashion, matching my dress colors and all, etc. That is what many people understand of the cross. Even many Christians, that is the end of the understanding of the cross. And that was my understanding many years ago. I am born and brought up in a traditional Christian faith. I am a believer Christian only 16 years ago. I came to India not a believer. I came to India as a plain traditional Christian. Uh, but I became a believer here through Indians. Through Indians, you know. So um, I, I received the faith in Christ here. And now, why the cross is so central? Now the Bible does not refer the cross as something attractive, something uh, pleasant to decoration. It, it, in fact, there is a picture completely opposite in the Bible. The portion of the Bible in the old part of the Bible, that is the books of the Jews, uh, the first half of the Bible, we call it the Old Testament in the uh, English language, it refers to the cross as something not nice. You'll be surprised. Uh, it refers to the cross as something ugly. It says, the cross is a place of cursing. The cross is a place where somebody who is to be punished badly, and somebody who is cursed, somebody who is rejected by society, the cross fits him. And there is a statement in the uh, books of the Jews, the first half of the Bible, that says, it's God's word uh, said by a prophet. It says, cursed is the man who hangs on a tree. Uh, it was a reference to the uh, tree, a reference to a cross. Um, so, uh, when in the life of Jesus, the cross was not 
a pleasant thing, desirable. But it was a necessity for something which I'll explain. Um, uh, the Bible, as you are aware of, uh, some of you may not be aware, just quickly, is made out of two sections. It is 66 collection of 66 books uh, written over a period of approximately 4,000 years. It's not one book, it's a collection of books. And uh, uh, the first half, that is the books of the Jews, uh, uh, it is uh, mainly prophetic and written by prophets of various history in the life of the uh, history of the Jews. And right from the first book onwards, there is uh, sometime almost directly, but very often indirectly, reference to the cross. Now, the, why there is a, a, where does the cross come? Why, why the cross? I have not yet explained it. I'll try to come to the point. Uh, basically, it's the gospel. It's the gospel, the, the, the news of salvation from sin. There the cross comes. Uh, essentially, uh, the Bible reveals to us that man is a sinner. Man is a sinner by nature. He inherited that from the days of Adam. I was born and brought up, and in my nature, I'm a sinner. And therefore, I, I sin. Sin by thoughts, sin by words, sin by behavior, and many, many, many things. It's the nature of man is sinner. And the Bible also says that the person who sins, he reaps death, a sentence of death. Uh, there is a spiritual death, there is a natural death, etc. So, there is a sentence of death on every human being on this earth because of sin. Because sin is offensive to God and therefore man and God cannot fellowship together, cannot come together because of that enemy sin between them. And now what happened is, this sin is so grievous and so serious and so great that whatever I do to pay for the cost of the sin to get rid of it, it is too small, not good enough to wipe sin from my life. See, if I give charity to the poor, it is very nice, that's a beautiful thing, the Bible recommends to do that, but it is not big enough to wipe sin from my life. As far as it's a good act, it is a good act, but not good enough to wipe sin from my life. Okay? Now, God sent Jesus, a perfect man, a man without sin, a man would refer, prefer to suffer rather than sin, an exception, a person who sin did not enter him. He was tempted in every way, but yet he did not sin. Therefore, the sentence of death does not belong to him as it belongs to all of us. He deserved to live forever. That was the quality of Jesus from the spiritual point of view. From the point of view as man, he walked as man on earth, like anybody else. He had to work for his bread and many different things, like anybody else. But from the spiritual point of view, he was not worthy of death, because sin did not succeed going into him. Okay? So in that sense, he was a perfect man. Now this Jesus obeyed God, to the point of being wrongly sentenced to the death of a sinner. Okay? So therefore, satisfying the justice of God that death is the price for sin. A perfect man who don't deserve to be dead, who don't deserve to taste for death, and he was willing to die on behalf of others, paying the price of sin. Therefore, the cost he's paying is worthy to wipe away sins. It, see, the, 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 the sacrifices which everybody does in trying to remove sin from their life is not successful in removing sin. But Jesus, because of his value of being sinless, because of his value of obeying, obeying God till the end, therefore the sacrifice he offered 
was acceptable to God as a cause for sin. And there, that is why the cross of Jesus is central in the Christian life. And that is why it is necessary for Jesus to die the death that God knew about it beforehand. And that's why he was, um, uh, his death was the key for those who believe in him and those who receive that sacrifice in their heart and accept it. They are entitled that their sin is paid for. You know, it is a, a, a cost for paying for the sin. You know, that is what the cross is in the Christian life. That's why it is 